Uh, in a statistic I saw, it said that there were 3,000 lottery winners in Korea. Is there anyone here who won $1 million from a lottery? It seems no one has. Compared to Korea, the U.S. has bigger lottery prizes. Now, some scholars who were bored wanted to see what happened to these lottery winners. And they found out that many committed suicide, got a divorce, became addicted to drugs or alcohol, or went bankrupt. So how did these people get into such circumstances, even though they had won one to five million dollars? Well, these people got into these situations because they weren't prepared to deal with such large amounts of money, which caused them to overindulge and squander all their money. Essentially, having a lot of money doesn't always mean happiness. You first need to have the capacity to handle such an amount. If you look at an iceberg floating in the ocean, we only see a fraction of it, since most of it is underwater. How much of the iceberg would be underwater? Well, 90% would be submerged and 10% would be seen, because the density of ice is around 0.9. Thus, 90% of it would sink and only 10% would float. If we assume that this 10% here represents the success of a business or income, you can increase this result by placing more on top. If you want this to rise, you need to add more to the bottom. The iceberg of a lottery winner, however, would look more like this. In other words, these lottery winners aren't able to handle large amounts of money because they don't have the capacity to do so. If they don't have the depth to control money, what happens when they win the lottery? What happens? The iceberg becomes flipped upside down, right? That's why in countries like the US and the UK, the prize money is given like a pension rather than a lump sum. Otherwise, people commit suicide, get a divorce, become addicted to drugs or alcohol, or become bankrupt. They don't know how to handle the money. Thus, money won't bring you happiness, unless you earn it through hard work. As such, I will be explaining to you how you can increase the capacity of this 90%. The title of this lecture is Super Synergy of United Heart. I think many of you have already heard this phrase, and you might be wondering, what does that phrase mean? In the original Chinese, the character for unified or united is used. The same character appears in another phrase, which mentions cultivating one's morals to manage the family. Thus, this character can be used in various ways. Essentially, you unite the family by cultivating your morals. Similarly, super synergy of united heart means that everyone cultivates themselves so that they can be of one mind and heart in order to work together towards a common goal. Unless we all work together as a group, it will be difficult to achieve success in the MLM business. As such, managing your family or uniting your family can refer to making your organization or downline be of one heart. What happens if you can accomplish this? You can govern the nation. Or, in this case, take the domestic market. It's possible, right? From there, we can sweep the global market by making the world peaceful. This can only happen when we are unified or united. The key to success in the atomy business is this concept. Instead of doing it alone, you need to work together. One Chinese proverb stated, three leather shoemakers can beat Zhuge Liang. Zhuge Liang was a very famous strategist who served under Liu Bei in the state of Shu Han. Yet even Zhuge Liang would lose to three leather shoemakers working together. Although it might sound like nonsense, modern scholars call this concept collective intelligence, 
Hence, no individual intelligence can compete with a collective intelligence. As nothing is free in this world, no one in history has ever been successful without some form of studying. Some of you will probably immediately reject this concept. You might say, my neighbor graduated from the best college, but he acts like a good-for-nothing. This is due to a misconception about studying. In the past, the concept of learning was different. The Chinese word for study is gongfu, which is a combination of work and husband. So does that mean studying equates to a working husband? No, but that's their word for studying. Now in school, studying is about doing well in languages, math, and getting good grades. However, that is only one-third of the entire concept, and it is only about our intellectual discipline. During the agricultural and industrial period, you would be respected and lived well just with intellectual discipline. When I was in high school, everyone in Korea wanted to be doctors, judges, and prosecutors. Yet unlike now where grades matter, you could be a judge by passing an exam. These people are currently living decent lives. The only reason why they have such lives is because they studied well. That's what a cool head is. Children in Korea are being sent to private academies in order to better develop their cool head. However, that is just one aspect of studying. In Neo-Confucianism, studying is a very important concept. It is usually defined as the cultivation of our body. So, what does that actually mean? Well, to them, the body included our head, our mind, and our physical body. Our complete body would consist of these three elements. Therefore, you can't study well just by learning with your mind. You also needed the discipline in your heart. Intellectual discipline is also known as having a cool head, which is about level-headedness and making rational judgment. Knowledge is necessary when making correct decisions. Generally, in economics and business administration, the reward for making the right decision in uncertainty is called profit. Therefore, if you can't make the right decision, you are bound to suffer losses instead of making profit. You need to have a cool head. Next would be the mind discipline, which is also known as warm heart. You might think that you could live well by tricking others, but I have yet to see anyone become successful. You need to have a warm heart. As long as you do something useful for your partners and eventually the citizens, many scholars believe that you will be able to achieve success. Characteristics like firm determination, earnest desire, morality, sincerity and honesty all come from the heart. Now, even if you have a cool head and a warm heart, it will be for naught unless you take action. Thus, you need to have busy hands and feet. Which means being healthy and industrious. Therefore, once you get a cool head and warm heart, you need to take action by having busy hands and feet. Out of all the cultivations that you need to do with your body, this last discipline is the hardest to train. Actually, before cultivation, we have the four virtues of investigation, knowledge, sincerity, and rectification. Cultivation comes after the studies of a cool head and warm heart because it's very difficult to discipline the busy hands and feet. If your head knows that waking up at 5 a.m. to exercise is good for your body and you become determined to do so but end up sleeping instead of getting up, then nothing will be changed since your body didn't move. This can be seen as a person's habit or work ethic. The process of achieving success by disciplining all three areas is what was known as studying by the Neo-Confucians. One of the three disciplines, the warm heart, is the most important factor. Many successful people in the U.S. believe that thoughts like, I need to succeed with the atomy business, show an earnest desire. And, if you don't have this drive, you won't be able to achieve success. 
As long as you can discipline your warm heart, you will automatically begin learning about the company, the products, and any other knowledge required for success. You will then start taking action, yet if you don't make up your mind or have the earnest desire to succeed, how do you expect your body to move? So, you begin with a warm heart, and the rest will follow. For the people who have come here for the first time, there are some factors that you need to look at before deciding what to do. This will hold true for any business you do and not just for Atomy. Furthermore, instead of relying on others, you need to collect and investigate the information yourself. First, you need to see if it is a legal company. There are very few companies that operate illegally nowadays. However, the companies that do planned real estate, pyramid schemes and unapproved fundraising show up in the news because they are generally illegal. These companies weren't legally recognized. Essentially, is it a legal company? Even if the company was legitimately established, the way the business is managed and developed has to be lawful as well. The second factor deals with the morality and abilities of the CEO. Unless the company does charitable work, the CEO can't just have good morals. If that was the case, your friendly neighbor would be the better choice. However, since he lacks the abilities, the company would fail if he was CEO. As such, both morals and abilities are needed. Then we have product competitiveness, which includes quality and price. Next is the profit structure. Finally, the burden of expenses like the entry and maintenance fees. If these fees exist, you will be in debt and have a stockpile of inventory. You need to check these conditions thoroughly before any other factors as they are core concepts because the rest are all just supplementary. If you think it's a great company, then you need to make a decision because you don't have time to be wishy-washy. Have you heard about the famous Tacoma Narrows Bridge collapse? In the 1940s, the U.S. was the strongest nation at the time. So, they used the best civil engineering technology to build the Tacoma Narrows Bridge and then had a fabulous opening ceremony. This bridge was built to overcome earthquakes and withstand strong winds that were as fast as 110 miles per hour. Now, a bridge that was supposed to withstand 110 mile per hour winds collapsed when a mild gust of wind blew at 40 miles per hour. In Washington, there is a very good public college called the University of Washington. Some scholars from this school started to research why the bridge collapsed. As they researched how this light breeze caused this incident, they discovered the answer using this formula. Essentially, all objects have something called a natural frequency. Now, if an external force has a frequency, that is equal to the natural frequency, it will cause the amplitude to grow infinitely and cause destruction. Therefore, even if it is a weak force, as long as the contractors have the same voice and work together, they will become infinitely stronger due to the synergistic effects. In this equation, we have the amplitude of oscillations, force of wind, natural frequency of bridge, and frequency of wind eddies. If the values of W0 and W1 are similar, the difference of the two squares will be closer to zero. If the difference equals zero, you will get an infinite value. If a frequency becomes infinite, it means it will collapse. A great example that shows why the half-smarters can succeed with the Atomy business is the Tacoma Narrows Bridge. No matter how weak a wind might be, you can still get infinite strength when everyone is of one voice. Again, this bridge was built to withstand 110 mile per hour winds because the natural frequency is equal to that of a 40 mile per hour wind. As such, if the wind blew at a speed less than or greater than 40 miles per hour, it wouldn't have affected this bridge. Anyway, even if something is weak, but you are able to become one, you will be able to get unlimited synergy. This is the current Tacoma Narrows Bridge, and it has been built so that the natural frequency doesn't occur when the wind blows. Otherwise, the bridge would collapse again if it did. Next, we have the Technomart in Seoul, which was in the news as well. People had to be evacuated after this building shook violently. Some engineers investigated why this happened. 
They wanted to know if it was a faulty design or if something else caused this building to shake. This is the picture of the engineers doing some tests. On the 12th floor of the building, there was a fitness center. The newly hired fitness instructor wanted to passionately lead the class with Tae Bo, which combined Taekwondo and boxing. One, two, one, two. What happens as they continue to exercise? More and more power becomes applied, and the vibrations from this increased power was felt on the 30th floor. This means that the building shook because the natural frequency of the 30th floor was equal to that of the Tebo steps. These people didn't feel anything because the frequencies were different. So what did the scientists find out? They found a change in the vibrations when everyone exercised together. Thus, the building could have collapsed if they had continued exercising. Eventually, the fitness center was closed down. Likewise, if you work together through super synergy of united heart, you can obtain great strength. You will be able to obtain a power like you've never seen. Uh, if you ever come across a honeybee hive, you sometimes see a lot of dead bees around it. This generally happens when the hive is attacked by a wasp because one wasp has enough poison to kill 500 honeybees. Therefore, if a honeybee and wasp got into a one-on-one -on -one fight, it wouldn't stand a chance and lose immediately. As such, if you see a great number of honeybees lying dead around a hive, it means that a wasp attacked it. Now what should the honeybees do? They need to fight 500 to 1. However, their victory is still not guaranteed for these bees. Hence, the honeybees rely on a different method to get rid of the wasp called thermal defense. In order to understand what that is, you need to first understand that a wasp will die if it reaches temperatures above 113 to 117 degrees Fahrenheit, while a honeybee can withstand an extra 1.8 degrees Fahrenheit. Due to this difference, hundreds of bees can surround a wasp, raise their internal core temperature to within that 1.8 degrees and kill the wasp. The honeybees can survive because of that temperature gap. Basically, the honeybees work together to kill the wasp by surrounding and overheating it because an individual honeybee can't do it alone. Similarly, if you compare human capital on a one-to-one -one basis, it would be difficult to say that people at Atomy have more capital to the people who work at distinguished companies. In a one-to-one -one battle, we will lose because they have a higher quality of human capital. If we wanted to beat them, it would be impossible to do it individually. That's where the super synergy of united heart comes in. Unless we join forces and work together, it will be impossible to beat them. The only way for people who have low human capital to raise their income to something higher is by working together and having a super synergy of united heart. For that reason, you can't do the atomy business alone. There is a very famous African proverb that was used as a title for a Korean bestseller and it read, If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. What do you think would happen if you traveled alone in Africa? You could get eaten by a lion, so you needed to travel together. The glass in this picture can break with sound because the natural frequency of the glass was the same as the sound. I think there was a high-pitched singer who placed a glass down and sang until it shattered. She was able to do this because her voice reached the high-pitched frequency cycle that matched the natural frequency of the gas to shatter it. This is what's known as resonance. When people work together as one, they can make the impossible possible. We need to have resonance in this business, which means we all have to be of one voice. In order for this to happen, you need to participate in the system. You need to come to the seminars to listen together. Think about the same things. 
learn about the company policies and how the business will develop. Moreover, you should talk about and discuss the concerns that your partners have and enjoy meals together. That's how resonance can happen. Resonance is necessary if you want to succeed, and the best way to make it happen is by coming to the seminars. The most important concept for this lecture is having a warm heart, which is the determination to become successful, the earnest desire to succeed, and the willpower not to give up. Once you have a warm heart, you will naturally discipline your cool head by learning about the company, the products, and the marketing plan as you do the business. You will also learn about the consumer's sentiment. If you learn about the sentiment first, you won't be able to do the marketing. Again, you need to have the determination and earnest desire to succeed first. Your busy hands and feet and your cool head will follow. So, what is the core reason for studying? Well, since success is a science, all you need to do is study. However, you can't just focus on having a cool head. There are many people from great schools living a poor life. I know a few people like this, and they seem like bums who don't know anything. However, this does not mean that they were bad at studying. What did they study? They only focused on their intellectual discipline, which means that their academic IQ is outstanding. If they were alive during the agricultural and industrial period, they would have been successful with a cool head. They could have lived well as respectable doctors or judges. Yet, in the current information age, people are not hired just for their knowledge or intelligence. You need a warm heart which includes your sociability with others, how sent you are towards your decision and your firm resolve. You also need to have busy hands and feet to show for it. As long as you do these three studies, I believe that all of you can make anywhere from 10K to 50K a month in the next three years. I hope all of you succeed. Thank you for listening.